Welcome to the cabin. Today we're merging the worlds of The Last of Us and Warhammer 40,000. But before we start though, please consider giving the video a thumbs up if you like it, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about future content. With that said, let's get to it. So my girlfriend Kala and I just finished watching the first season of The Last of Us. We thought it was really good, and Kala suggested we should do something inspired by it for the channel. Fungal zombies immediately made me think of Nurgle, so I assembled a plague marine for us to use. The concept is that Kala sculpts a bunch of fungi across the mini, which I can then paint in a grim dark style. So on to Kala's voiceover. Hi there, Kala here. I just wanted to share a bit of my thought process for this project. The Last of Us was for me one of those few contemporary shows that leaves a lasting impression. I felt there was an auspicious beauty in the way the show depicted decay and infection, and it reminded me in some way of the artworks created by Stephanie Kilgost, who's a contemporary artist that's known for her recycled art. All these inspired me to try my hand at producing something that could marry the organic with the inorganic. So here's my first try at using green stuff to sculpt various forms of fungi. I want to highlight my three main takeaways from this project. One, documenting the art process is hard. Kudos to Robin for doing this for every single video. We start doing a time lapse at the beginning, but it was difficult for me to sculpt with that setup. So here's the finished model after I opted to tackle one challenge at a time and just focus on the actual sculpting itself. Which brings us to number two. Green stuff is not polymer clay, which is a medium that I'm a little bit more familiar with. It's a beast all on its own. Water and time are your main allies, and I had to be mindful to wet my tools and hands constantly to avoid ripping off the finicky details I was trying to sculpt and attach on the figure. At the final stages, I found a ratio of blue to yellow that worked better for me in terms of pliability and drying time. Being unsure of the material itself was frustrating, and it heightened my sense of artistic insecurity, which leads me to my last takeaway. I really have to teach myself to find success in overcoming a challenge, rather than critiquing my art for what it doesn't succeed to portray. See, I rarely finish any art piece because I just end up being disappointed by the art that I produced. This project was a great challenge because I knew promising Robin that I would deliver forced me to just keep going. My final piece is in no way perfect, and there are others that could surely do better, but at the end of the day, I'm glad I finished it. Thank you for allowing me to share this process with you. I hope it gives you joy. Time to hand a torch to Robin so he can finish the race. Bye! Thanks. I think the finished sculpt looks amazing, and at this point I was excited to slap some paint on it. My concept was to put down some base coats and highlights in preparation for a grimy wash in order to get that grim dark look. I started by giving the whole model an undercoat of Zandri dust. After this, I used Ushapti bone through the airbrush as a zenithal highlight. Using the same technique, I then applied Wraith Bone, this time a little bit more selectively. For the armor trims, I used Balthasar Gold. I then added a highlight using Psychorax Bronze. For all the silver details, I applied Lead Belcher. This was followed by a highlight of Runefang Steel. To simulate the heresy color scheme, I used Elysian Green to base coat the shoulder pads. This was followed by a highlight of Ogren Camo. For the skulls on the Legion symbol, I simply used Skeleton Horde contrast paint. The sword and handle on the bolt gun were base coated with Rhinox Hide. We'll add some rust effects to these later on. 
The blight grenades were highlighted with pallid witch flesh. Then I painted the stitches with Nazdreg yellow contrast paint. Lastly, I applied Volupus Pink, diluted with about 50% contrast medium. The loincloth, as well as the eye lenses, were base coated with corn red. I then layered on Screamer Pink. Finally, I used Pink Horror as an edge highlight. Now it's time for the fungi, and I chose to paint these in more saturated colors to make them pop, as well as stand out against the more muted colors of the Plague Marine. I used Flash Gits Yellow to paint about a third of the fungi as well as some of the mutated details of the original sculpt. Another third was painted with Troll Slayer Orange. And the final fungi were base coated with Emperor's Children. The yellow fungi were highlighted with Dorn Yellow. While the orange details were highlighted with a 50-50 mix of Troll Slayer Orange and Pallid Witch Flesh. Finally, the pink details were highlighted with a 50-50 mix of Emperor's Children and Pallid Witch Flesh. I gave the whole model a 50-50 mix of matte and satin varnish. Now that the colors were all in place, it was time to dirty down the miniature. I used Streaking Grime All Over, which is an enamel paint from AK Interactive. I let this sit for about 30 minutes, and while it wasn't fully dry, it was enough for the next step. I then used a small sponge dipped in mineral spirits to wipe away some of the grime from the raised details. After another 60 minutes to dry, I applied streaking rust on some selected rivets and other details on the flat armor panels. These thin streaks dried quickly and I then used a synthetic brush dipped in some mineral spirits to blend it and make the streaks look more realistic. You can go back and forth to create the look you want. Going back to the acrylic paints, I used white scar to add small dots to the corner of the eye lenses. I then added a layer of Wazdaka Red. And finally a highlight of Wild Rider Red. The base rim was then painted with Abaddon Black, and the miniature was left to thoroughly dry overnight, before giving it another coat of the 50-50 mix of matte and satin varnish. The only thing left now was to fix the sword and handle on the bolt gun. I started with a dry brush of grey sear. Then I applied some dirty down rust over the areas. For good results, make sure that the pot is thoroughly mixed and slightly above room temperature. After drying, I went back with a damp brush along some of the edges to help create highlights as water can reactivate this paint. With that, the Plague Marine was done. I had a great time with this collaboration, and it was really fun to see how well the worlds of The Last of Us and Warhammer 40,000 combined. I think Kala did an amazing job with the sculpting, and I think I was able to achieve the effect I was going for with the grimdark painting. Thank you so much for watching. Click subscribe and ring that bell icon if you don't want to miss out on any future content from the channel. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and follow us on social media for updates. We'll see you next time. Good luck with your miniatures.